So if you find this sleep story helpful or interesting, then give it a thumbs up, leave any comments that you've got below. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you can receive notifications of when future sleep stories go live. I have dozens and dozens of stories already on my channel that you can go and search. I also release new stories every single week. So I hope you enjoy this story. Okay, so take a moment to allow yourself to get comfortable and allow your eyes to close. And with your eyes closed, you can listen along to me talking in the background. And while I talk in the background, so you can begin to comfortably drift off asleep. And as you drift off asleep, I'm just going to tell a story. And the story is about a woman who is on a motivational retreat. She's on this retreat to gain some motivation for starting and running a business. And on this retreat, she's frequently sat down in halls surrounded by others who've attended the same retreat. And session after session, she sits and relaxes in a comfortable position and has the leader of the retreat guiding her and the others through different experiences, helping them to drift deeply and comfortably into their mind, helping them to begin to relax and begin to focus on what's relevant to focus on for being motivated and having that level of motivation for continuing to make the necessary changes when running a business, for being able to face challenges while remaining motivated. And she finds that she enjoys some of these sessions and finds that as she drifts and dreams in her mind, while the leader speaks on, She becomes so absorbed in her imagination and on this retreat not only does she sit down and have these sessions where they all relax and imagine the future and imagine the steps to their goals, imagine achieving their goals, imagine looking back at how they arrived at their goals, but they also take time to go out and learn to enjoy being in the moment. And one day during the retreat, she had the most unusual experience. She went out into the woods as she had done every other day, following that path from the retreat down through some fields, gazing out, looking over the fields, noticing the hedgerows, noticing how the patchwork of fields went on way off into the distance, and the sky, and the colour of the sky, and gazing around to see if there's any clouds in the sky and the feeling of the breeze on her skin, and the sound of each footstep while walking along that path. And she walked down to the edge of the woods, and entered the woods as she had done many days in a row. Noticed the sounds changing, an increase in the sounds of the birds, now she's at the woods. And she walked deeper into the woods, noticing how the light begins to dim, 
the air calms and everything sounds calmer with just a faint rustling of the leaves overhead. And she walks deeper into the woods, following this path towards a lake. And she arrives at the lake. And she has with her what's a bit like half a tent. It's a tent designed for sitting in that gives you a little bit of shelter that you can just sit in and relax in. And she sets that up by the lake. She sits with her legs crossed, her arms resting on her legs. She closes her eyes. She takes some deep breaths in and out. In and out. She makes each out breath longer than each in breath as she relaxes deeper and deeper into her experience. And while she relaxes deeper into her experience, she spreads out her awareness. And she spreads that awareness out to hearing the sounds of the rustling leaves in the woods behind her, to hearing the very gentle lapping of the water on the shore, to hearing the occasional splash of birds landing in the water, the occasional kind of plopping sound of fish snatching something from the surface. and the slight sound of the tent moving in the breeze. And in the distance, she begins to notice that there's a sound she hadn't heard previously. It was a sound of a frog. And in her mind's eye, she started trying to recreate her environment she started to imagine what her environment looked like, what the lake looked like, what the woodland around the lake looked like, what the sky was like. She started to recreate that external world internally so that she could begin to get a sense of where she thinks that frog might be. And she had a sense that that frog was off a little bit in the distance on the other side of the lake. And she could pinpoint where that frog was in her mind's eye. And after a little while, she opened her eyes and walked to the shore of the lake. And she looked left and looked right, looking along the lake. She looked over the lake, and she could hear that frog off in the distance. And so she decided to leave everything where it was and walk around the lake to that far side and find the frog. And she strolled along the edge of the lake, being mindful as she went, being present, being in the moment, being aware of each footstep she was taking, all the movements involved in taking each footstep moving her arms, her body, her legs. Gently walking around that lake. And she got round to the other side and she could hear that frog louder and louder. And then as she got 
just a few meters away, she could see the frog on the edge of the lake, resting just partially in the water. And she crouched down and just watched that frog. And as she watched that frog, so she heard a noise coming from the woods behind her. And she was curious what the noise was and felt compelled to go and explore. And she walked into the woods, going deeper and deeper into those woods. And the sound got louder and louder as she got closer and closer. And then, in a clearing, she could see a spaceship just resting there, making a humming sound. And she could see some aliens wandering around, getting some samples from the woods, taking some cuttings. And she watched with curiosity as they did this. before seeing them go back into the ship, the door of the ship closing, the humming increasing in pitch, and then the ship seemingly making an impossible move, darting off at an angle and just vanishing almost in an instant. And she went over and explored the landing site. And could feel the excitement of what she had just seen. And wondered whether anyone would believe her. And after exploring for a bit. And not finding any concrete evidence. She headed back towards that frog. still with her mind elsewhere, wondering about that spaceship, where it came from, what it was doing, whether it'll be back, whether they saw her. And she went back and watched the frog, and she just sat down watching that frog, while thinking about that spaceship and wondering what it all means. And after a little while, the sun was beginning to set. So she found herself wandering back around the lake. She sat the other side of the lake for a little while, just as the sun was setting so that she could enjoy the colors of the light from the sky across the lake. And as the temperature began to shift, she enjoyed seeing the slight mist that started to form just above the water. And as the last few rays of sun went over the horizon, the other side of the woods, And night time was just dimly lit by the afterglow from the set sun. She packed up her stuff, found her way back through the woods, back to her course, and back at the venue. She tried to tell people what she had seen, and as she suspected, no one believed her. And she didn't mind, because she probably wouldn't believe her either. And she didn't mind, because she probably wouldn't believe herself either. She just wanted to share her story. Because she was excited by what she had seen.
and that night in her room, while settling down and meditating before bed. She started meditating about what she had seen. She started clearly visualizing in her mind's eye the scene that she had seen. And while she did that, she was meditating and seeing the ship and seeing what the ship looked like, the dimensions, the textures, colors, sounds. And as she was doing this, she had a bizarre experience. All of a sudden, she heard a voice in her mind. And she realized that somehow this alien civilization had created some kind of a connection, almost a telepathic kind of connection with her somehow. That somehow perhaps they had monitored her, or maybe they'd been able to figure out that through telepathy perhaps, they realized she was thinking about their ship, however it happened. They connected minds and started communicating and sharing knowledge and information about how they were just doing research and taking samples of different plants and DNA samples that they could use to analyze what life on earth was like to compare that with life from other planets, to work out the family trees of life on a planet, where they would take samples from hundreds and hundreds of different plants and animals, and they'd check out the DNA, and using genetic markers, they would trace back and work out the evolutionary history of that planet. And they shared this knowledge with her. And they shared that something they were curious about was lived experience. That it's all very well. having informational knowledge about what species are on a planet at the present time, about the genetic lineage of life on a planet, is quite another to be able to know what actually happens on a planet. And they can observe some of those things. But other things, they can't observe. They need to find out from someone. And so they ask for permission to be able to engage with her on a psychic level, to be able to explore knowledge to explore her knowledge from what she was taught about life on earth because they can't go and find fossils and work all this out for themselves because that would be too obvious they'd draw too much attention they'd have to find the sites find the fossils but what they can do is psychically connect with the most intelligent beings that they find, the ones with the most knowledge for that planet, and just find a being that they can choose that seems curious and inquisitive, and so likely to have an attitude that engages with the process they want to do. And they share knowledge 
They don't share all their knowledge because it would be too advanced and would mean nothing. But they share some of their insights and some little fragments of knowledge. While having knowledge shared with them And that knowledge shared with them is what the person chooses to share about the history that they know of the planet. And they don't have to consciously know that they know it. They just have to have learned it through their life. So that non-consciously, outside of conscious awareness, it's in their brain and it can be accessed but they have to engage in the process willingly and with curiosity and wonder. And so she allows this to happen and they engage and communicate with each other and they learn about the history of the planet. They learn about life on earth currently, about interactions, relationships, how things work, about insecurities and everyday struggles. And they share with her knowledge on their way of being, their way of living, how they've managed to travel the stars not the technology they've used, but their mentality to things, their way of thinking about things that's allowed them to get on well enough for long voyages, that's allowed them to overcome some of their old ways of being so that they can work together to achieve large projects and the woman found this all very fascinating and was deeply intrigued by it all and after a while of many hours of this happening this engagement They mutually disengaged and they couldn't do anything other than send a message essentially without that mutual consent. A little bit like the way a phone can ring but you can only communicate with each other and know what's being said at either end. If there's mutual consent to have that phone call and the person chooses to answer the call. And at any point, either party can disconnect. And she remained connected for a while, until they mutually felt that enough had been shared. And they explained to her before disconnecting that they wouldn't need to be back connecting with her again. And that their role is to now go somewhere else on earth. And to learn something about another area, another culture. Somewhere distant from here. And that they do that a few times around a planet. And that after they've done that a few times around a planet, they travel back off to the stars. They travel for many generations before arriving at another habitable planet and that these habitable planets, they can detect them. They've got the technology to detect which planets around which stars are habitable. But the stars are so far apart that those who detect their next destination aren't the ones who arrive at the destination. 
They entrust that to their future generation, and they look after each other. They look after their environment, so their environment is suitable for future generations. And she found all this very fascinating. And after her experience, she started writing it down. She knew no one would believe her, but she felt this compulsion to type. And she typed it all down, she typed down the knowledge they gave. She typed down her experience and how they connected. And she decided now that this was a new venture, that she'd come here to gain motivation, to be able to run her own business and be motivated enough to stick at her new business and to focus on achieving her success. But now she found that this was what she wanted to do. This is what she was passionate about taking this experience and this learning, sharing this experience, and then building on it, and seeing what she can learn and discover about how people can lead their lives and perhaps move towards a spacefaring society like this one is. And suddenly she feels this sense of purpose. This sense of control over her life. This sense of a connection to something larger than herself. And with calmness and wisdom, she starts writing and sees a future for herself doing what it is that she's passionate about. And after writing the beginning of her book, she settles down for the night, closes her eyes, relaxes and drifts comfortably asleep. <laughs>